I'm getting ready to digitize Percy. The chicken from Lori Holt's Chicken Salad Quilt. If you are new to this series, I am doing this quilt by tracing the outline of her simple shapes for the chickens. And I have scanned those into the Brother Scan and Cut and uploaded those to the Brother Canvas workspace. I'm about ready to cut out all of the shapes that I need for Percy. When you go to canvasworkspace.brother.com, and this is free to do this, you can create an account. The first window you see is for a download for the PC version of Canvas Workspace. I do not use that. I prefer to work online because I never work where I don't have the internet. So I'm going to close out of this. And as I said earlier, I have scanned in all of the pieces. And so there are several tabs here across the top and I'm going to click on my projects. And when those come up, I have titled them with the number of the piece according to the sewing guide put out by Lori Holt on her blog. And those correspond with pages seven and eight in the sewing guide. So the first one I'm gonna pull up is for the body. If you look at the spreadsheet I created to tell you uh, what chicken piece goes with which chicken and which fabric, which you can find on my blog, powertoolswiththread.com. You can see that for Percy, we need pieces 2, 4, 12, 15, and 26. 26 is the body, so I'm going to scroll down until I find 26 right here. We have two buttons here. We have edit and we have download, and I'm not ready to download yet. I'm going to edit. So I'm gonna click on this button one time, and it's gonna bring up Percy's body. Now, according to the pattern, the body is reversed. So I'm going to click on it. There are three tabs across the top for project, edit, and view. I'm gonna to go to edit, and I'm gonna come down here to the flip, and I'm going to flip horizontal. And that puts Percy in the right orientation. You can tell on page 13 of Lori's sewing guide, there's a picture of Percy down at the bottom and then you can see what he looks like and how all of his pieces need to go. So I'm going to just take this piece and I'm going to put it over here. The way I like to work this is I will bring in all of the pieces and the ones I need, I will move over here, and the ones I don't need, I will delete. And now I'm going to come over here to this menu. It, we have several menu choices here, and I'm going to click on My Projects. And this will show me all of the pieces that I have scanned in. And even though they're not titled at the top, like earlier, you can see what they're titled by hovering over it and it will give you the piece numbers. So if I come right here, there is piece number 12 is included in this grouping. So I'm just gonna click this one time and it's gonna bring it in onto the mat. I'm gonna click off. Mine are numbered sequentially according to this. So this was 6, 11, 12, 17, and 35. This is 6, 11, 12. This is the one I need right here. And I'm gonna highlight all of these by dragging my cursor over it and hit the delete key on my keyboard. I'm gonna continue to scroll down here a little bit until I find this one right here has piece 15 on it. So it's 5, 14, and 15. This is 5, 14, and 15. There's the tail right there. I'm gonna click on it one time grab the tail that I want. I'm going to drag my mouse over the entire mat and hit delete. And then I need this one right here. There's one through four. One, two, three, and four. And I need pieces two and four. So I'm going to click on this. 
and I'm going to keep piece number two and number four and everything else. I'm going to highlight and delete. Okay, the chicken I have brought in. I'm going to turn it to the side so I can maximize my space on the mat. And when you highlight over something, you can tell what size it is right here. And this will give you an idea of what size of fabric you need in order to cut the piece out. So I generally round up. I'm going to use a seven by nine piece of fabric for piece number 26. And then these two, I'm going to cut out of the same fabric. I'm using a solid red for the wattle and the comb. And in order to know how much I need, I'm going to highlight them both and right click and group. And when I group them, I get an overall size. So I'm going to use a three and a half by four and a half inch piece of fabric for this. And here is the wing. We are supposed to have two of these. This needs to be reversed. So I'm going to come up again to edit and I'm going to flip horizontal and then I'm going to put this right here. You want to think about a square piece of fabric being on the mat that's going to be right here when you cut. So you wouldn't want to like nudge this in like this to maximize space because you're going to have fabric right here from another piece and you don't want that. All right, so I'm going to turn this this way. We have already reversed it. Both of them are reversed, so now I'm going to right click and you can either copy and paste or someone mentioned, why don't I just hit duplicate? Okay, so I duplicated it. And here on now, I'm going to rotate this all the way around and this is to maximize fabric. I just nudge them up close together like that. The tail, I'm going to cut separately on a different piece because my seven by nine piece of fabric is going to come all the way out here. You can fussy cut if you want and shove that on there. I'm, I'm not going to do that. So I'm all finished with this right now. I have pulled in all the pieces that I need and I want to download it. Now, if I leave this tail out here off the mat, it won't download. So I'm just going to put it right here for now. And then I'm going to download it again after I delete all the other pieces and then download the tail. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I move this off and I hit download, I'm going to get an error. The project cannot be downloaded. Some shapes extend beyond the cutting area. And that is because the tail is not on the mat. If you ever have that error come up and you think, let's say you've got your project kind of uh, big like this so you can, you can see it better, and then you try to download it and you get that error, you might want to drop the percentage of the screen and take a look and see if you've got anything sitting out here on the outsides that always causes a problem. So I'm going to download it now. I just won't cut this piece. I will delete it on the machine once it gets there. My scan and cut is turned on and I'm going to hit download. Now there's two things we can do here. We can do a scan and cut transfer that I want to do. I'm going to click this now and download it to the machine. There, that is at the machine. If you have not already, you can download it again and you want to download to PC. This will not work on a Mac unless you are running parallels with a Windows OS, but you want to download to PC. This is the FCM file we're going to use to create the embroidery file. So I'm going to click that. It has downloaded as m26.fcm. It didn't give you the rest of the numbers in the pieces because I started with M26 and just dragged others in. I did not open other projects. So I can go now to my downloads. If I go to my folder here at the bottom and I'm going to scroll up. These are some other downloads I have done. If I go to my downloads folder, I'm going to right click, open in new window, and here it is right here. I'm going to hit view, extra large icons. 
The reason you can see this is because I'm running a utility on my system, on my computer called Imbrilliance Thumbnailer. And Thumbnailer allows you to see FCM files. It's very cool. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to show more options in this menu and I'm going to click rename and I'm going to call it Percy. And now I want to move this window. I'm just going to move this file. See, it says move to Percy. I'll put a video right up here that shows you how I created chicken salad the folder and then I have a folder for each one of the chickens. Here they all are. So now I know where all my pieces go. All right, I'm ready to go over to the scan and cut. I'm in the process of ironing on the heat and bond and I wanted to show you what it looks like when your heat and bond is ironed on properly. Can you see how you can almost, so that's the back of it. Okay, there's the front. You can almost see this through the back of the paper. This is adhered properly. It gets kind of a dark, darker shade. So look at it, look at this one right here. See how this, this one right here looks whiter than these? I don't know if, if the camera can pick it up, but your eye can definitely see it. After I cut my piece out, then I flip it over and I iron it again and I will hold it there so that it gets darker. Let me get this ironed so you guys can see the difference in a side by side. I, I don't know if you can see it or not. No, I don't know if you can. See how much lighter this is over here than that? This is ironed on properly. You really want to hold this for the full five to 10 seconds. When you pull this off off the back, your heat and bond should look like glass. That's a good, now it is down into the fibers. It has become one with the, the fabric. It should look as shiny as the, as the paper you pulled it off of, okay? should look like glass. Don't rush this because you run the risk of it coming off on the mat and not staying on your fabric and that's no fun because then you have to do it all over again. You are not going to do any harm at all once you get your, you know, I iron it from the front and from the back just to make sure. Okay, I'm over here at the Scan and Cut I'm using the teal colored low tack mat. It says low tack mat right here. I have the gold blade in my machine. You can use the gold or the black. Either one will work. And I'm using the low tack mat. Since I am using the low tack mat, I'm gonna put my fabric on face up, paper off, heat and bond side down. If you're using the purple mat or the gold mat, you want fabric side down and leave the paper on. If you find that your, uh, your piece doesn't stick very well, you may want to use some scotch tape and tape it in the corners. Here at the machine, you have two different menu items right here. You have pattern and scan. And the pattern, the, this is for patterns that were in the machine that, that came with it when you bought it. But I want to retrieve data. I sent it down wirelessly. You can get it from in the machine wirelessly from a USB or cabled to your computer. I sent it wirelessly. All right, so now I can see Percy. There's his tail. I don't want that. Let me get my pointer. I'm gonna go to the tail because I'm not doing that one just yet. I'm gonna highlight it by touching it. I'm gonna go to edit and there's a trash can right there. I'm just gonna hit the trash can and tell it okay. So everything else now is going to cut out. This lets me see how I want to put the fabric on the mat. Okay, so I want to take the body fabric for Percy and I'm going to peel the paper off. And that is going to go right up here at the top. 
And I'm just going to rub it down with my fingers. You can use a brayer if you want, but this works just fine if your mat is nice and clean. I need this piece right here is for the wattle and the comb. And I'll save the wing for next go. I'm going to load the mat by hitting the second button right here. It'll take a picture of the fabric before you cut it so you know you've got it all in the right spot. I'm going to get out of this edit menu. I'm going to go hit OK. And there is the blue box and it that is the scan button. So I'm going to touch scan and start. If you send these down grouped, you cannot ungroup them down at the machine. You have to ungroup them up in canvas. That looks pretty good. I think that'll work just fine. Percy is pretty close to the edge of this fabric, so I'm going to take some scotch tape and just tape down the corners of this fabric just to make sure everything stays where it ought to. There's a lot of little tricks you can do like this, y'all. I mean, if your mat is not as sticky as you'd like it, nothing wrong with this at all. It will hold it in place. It's better to do this than to have fabric that gets scrunched up under the blade. That's no fun. Just to make sure everybody behaves like it's supposed to. Okay, I think this is going to work fine. I'm going to touch OK and OK. And what I'm doing is I'm backing out of all of these menus. Hit OK one more time, and now we're in the cut menu. I'm going to hit please select, and I'm going to touch cut. And start. And now when I pull it up, I want to make sure to get that tape up as well. Cut, perfect. This looks great. See that? That looks great. There, everything cut out just beautifully. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is tell it okay. I'm gonna go back to home. Okay to delete all the patterns, I'm going to tell it okay. So now I'm going to go back to Canvas and I'm going to download the design one more time. All right, so I am here at BES4. This software will take the FCM file created by the Scan and Cut and turn it into an applique embroidery pattern for your embroidery machine. And if you have Simply Applique, that is just a module that functions inside of the BES4. BES4 is like the mothership, and Simply Applique looks identical to it and will do the very same thing. So the only difference is this little icon up here, instead of a B, it looks like an A. This is like a file. So you would go like File, New, or Open, or Save As just like you would in any other word processing program or PowerPoint or something like that. So I want to bring in Percy's uh, parts and pieces. So I'm going to click on this, File, Import FCM. It brought me to the Chicks folder. I'm going to go up one level in the folder structure by clicking this little yellow folder with the green arrow. And I'm going to go to Percy. Double click that. And I could get the individual pieces here if that's how you did it, or I could pull it from this one. I made them all together in Brother Canvas and downloaded it. I'm going to click Open. And this is going to be pretty easy to do. Do not change the size of these files. They are the same as your cut file. So you don't want to mess with these because then your cut file will not fit. I wonder if I can separate these. I don't know that I can. Right click. Oh, you know what? I downloaded these grouped and I can't get them apart. They, the software thinks it is one object. So the solution to that, I'm gonna go to my projects. If you ever group something 
for whatever reason, you might want to ungroup it before you send it down. I need piece two and piece four. And I'm going to delete all this and put these back on the mat. And I'm just going to hit download. They cut out fine. I'm going to download this right now. And I'm going to go to folder and right click and show more options. Rename Percy Home Waddle. All right. And I'm going to come up here to chicken salad, right click, open in a new window. And I'm going to drag this over to Percy. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is come back here to BES4. This piece right here, I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. And now I'm going to go file, import FCM and import that there. Now they are two different pieces. Do you see what I did there? <laughs> if not, you could go back and watch it again. But what I did was I went back into Canvas and I just downloaded these two without them being grouped and uh, sent them back down. And I'm gonna use those instead of the other one. So right now let's rename everything. I'm gonna find the body, right click, rename body, just like we did with Hattie and Now I'm not sure which wing is which just yet. I haven't figured that out. I'm gonna highlight the body. I'm going to rotate. I'm gonna click on this rotate button and left 90. And now I'm gonna click the center in the hoop button. I'm still on the arrange tab. So I did a rotate 90 degrees and I want to center in the hoop. That's where I want the chicken to be. All right, so I'm going to take the tail and it sits on top of the body. The round portion of, the, of this waddle is inside, right up here, it is inside. And that actually looks about right. It is tilted kind of like seven o'clock with this little one part right here, the edge of the chicken is, the edge of the chicken fabric is right there in that, that little cleavage right there. That'll work. Okay. And then the comb sits about like that. The comb needs to go down before the body. You have to pull it up over the one you want it to be under. So now I'm gonna take the body and I'm gonna take it under the comb. There we go. So comb is first, then the body, that'll work. Then the waddle, waddle will stitch after the body. I need to move one of these wings, which one? This one, okay, I'm gonna rotate it. You can see about that much of it sticking out and it is right up under the waddle. This will be right click, rename, wing, rear so it is in the rear i'm going to pull that one up that needs to stitch after the comb because that is behind the body and this one right click i'm going to turn it let me highlight this one i'm going to rename it wing front there we go and that needs to stitch that can stitch after the waddle that's fine now i need to bring in the feet and to do that, I'm gonna open the BRF file, the working file that is the feet. And you can come over here to this recent file list. And I'm going to look and see if I can find it. There it is, chicken feet BRF. So you don't have to go searching all over the place. It's right here. I left these as a working file so that I can move the toes around as I need to. Someone had a really good idea about making this into a single embroidery file. And the way you would need to do that 
is once you have it rearranged, you would go file and print, print out the paper that has got the feet on it when it's like it is like how you want it. Then run that printed paper through the scan and cut, create the FCM file, and then bring it down exactly like we have done with the rest of the chicken. And that way you don't have to use those little individual yellow quarter inch strip pieces. You can just have two fully cut pieces for legs and feet. So that's kind of cool. Let me exit this. Uh, no, let me tell it no. Oh, oh what happened? Oh, I exited. <laughs> didn't mean to do that. And I didn't save it. Okay. So because I did that and shouldn't have, you are going to get to see how I do this in my time when I'm not teaching. So this is how quick you can be at it once you get the hang of this. I'm back where I was. Let me do something smart here. File, save as. It's a outline file. I'm in the Hattie folder. I'm going to go up one level. I'm going to go to, I need to bring in those legs. File, uh, open chicken feet, BRF. It opens in a new tab. Control A, select all, right click, copy. Go back to Percy, right click, paste, and these look like they're pretty close to right. I'm going to go over here to the flip, and we're just going to flip horizontal, and that looks pretty good. Always make sure that those joins all fit together. That looks pretty good right there. When you're in these little bitty pieces, it's much easier to move them by clicking over here in the sequence view. I think that'll look fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. Right click, copy, right click, paste, move it over here. Right click, paste. 
I'm going to do a control S for save. You didn't see anything happen, but it did. I got confused a little bit. I forgot that the bottom edge of the comb is actually under the body. Okay, that looks good. I am going to rename this. You cannot turn this into an applique if the eyeball is there. Take that text and get rid of it. Now, oh, control A. Aha, convert to applique. It does work. You cannot convert to applique if you already have text in there. So I'm going to hit this button. And it turns it into applique with the satin stitch. I don't want satin. I want it to be blanket. And click apply. Perfect. And I want to change all of the legs and the beaks. I need to move that beak so that it stitches before the body. Those need to be at uh, 1.0 and 2.0 and apply. There, now they're much smaller. That's great. And I want to go down to the bottom. I'm going to highlight the first one, hold down the shift key, highlight the last one, grab them all, get them by the picture and move them up. I guess they can go ahead and stitch after the feet just like we did with Hattie. Now I can put in the eye. Let me go to home, text, normal, click on the screen, hit the period. See you guys, you got to play with this. Select, bigger, there we go. Now he's done. Very good. Okay, so this is the PES and File, save. That one saved Percy Final is just the eyeball. That's weird. I'm going to call it Percy Final 2 and save. There. Now he is an embroidery file and ready to stitch out. Okay, you guys, you're ready to get started on this. We'll talk to you soon. Go say something. Bye.